So now that we've learned to use integrating factors with exact equations, we're going to demonstrate uh, the concepts from the previous video through this example right here. But before we start, let's go ahead and take a look at our roadmap. So the first thing that I would try to do is to separate the variables and do straight up integration. Um, so let's check to see if it's separable, but upon inspection, we determined that it, it is not separable, so we can't use straight up integration. It's also non-linear. It's not linear, therefore we cannot use uh, the methods that we've learned for the equations of the form y prime plus a of x is equal to b of x. Can't use that. We also see that we cannot express y prime as a function of y over x in order to turn it into a homogeneous equation using a change of variables. Can't do that. So what we're left with is to determine if this is an exact equation. And if it is, then well, we can use the methods that we've learned in the previous videos. So let's go ahead and test that. If we take this to be our m of xy, and this to be our n of xy, in order to test for exactness, then we test to see if the partial derivative of m with respect to y, which in this case would be 3x plus 2y, and we test to see if that is equal to the partial derivative of n with respect to x, and that comes out to be 2x plus y. And we can see that these two expressions are not equal, therefore this equation is non-exact. So we need to do something in order to turn it into an exact equation so that we can actually use the methods of exact equations to solve it. And as we learned in the previous videos, we're going to use our good friend, the integrating factor. Okay, so we have two possibilities for our integrating factor. We, we can choose our integrating factor mu to be a function of x, or we can choose it to be a function of y. And we're going to make this decision based on what integral is easiest to evaluate. So when we substitute in for these two expressions, these two possible integrating factors, what I get is mu of x can be e to the integral of my, which we determined was 3x plus 2y, minus nx, which is 2x plus y, I'm distributing the minus sign, all over n which is x squared plus xy and dx. Or we can choose our integrating factor to be function of y in which it would be e to the integral of nx which is 2x plus y minus my which is 3x plus 2y again distributing the negative sign all over m which is 3xy plus y squared and then dy. So which of these integrals is easiest to compute. Well, I can reduce this mu of x to be equal to e to the integral of, let's see, we get x plus y all over x times x plus y, factoring out an x. Uh, these cancel, leaving us with e to the integral of 1 over x dx, which comes out to be uh, e to the natural log of x which is just equal to x. That comes out pretty nice. So now let's take a look at mu of y to see if it comes out any simpler than this. So the numerator reduces to negative x minus y, and the denominator reduces to, well, I can factor out a y, and I get 3x plus uh, y and dy. And we can see that this doesn't really simplify as nicely as uh, mu of x does. So we're actually going to choose mu of x to be our integrating factor because it just comes out to be x. It's nice and easy. Whereas this, this integral for mu of y would actually require a little bit of work to actually evaluate that integral. So we're not going to bother doing that. We're going to use mu of x because that's perfectly okay. Okay, so let's just back up and go over what we've done so far. We checked to see if it, if it was exact or not and we determined that it was not exact, but that's okay. So we decided to choose an integrating factor and we chose the easiest one and we chose mu of x and it just came out to be equal to x. So now by multiplying through by mu of x through this whole entire differential equation, both sides, we can change this non-exact equation into an exact equation. So let's go ahead and multiply through the whole thing by x. So what we get is we get 3x squared y plus xy squared plus x cubed plus x squared y, and all of that times y prime, and equals zero. So if we were to choose this as our m, and this as our n, 
and we were to take the partial derivatives and set them equal to each other, they would be equal because our integrating factor has, a, has successfully changed this into an exact equation. So now it's just a matter of solving this equation like we would any other exact equation. And we'll go ahead and begin with this side right here. So let's say that psi sub x is equal to 3x squared y plus xy squared. So let's go ahead and integrate psi x, which will give us an expression for psi, the function that we are looking for. And this just becomes the integral of 3x squared y plus xy squared dx. Sorry, there should have been a dx right here. Anyway, let's go ahead and compute this real quick. Uh, we integrate with respect to x, and what we get is x cubed y plus 1 half x squared y squared. And then we also get a function of integration, which is going to be a function of y. We'll call g of y. And now we're going to take this result and we're going to differentiate it with respect to y. So d dy of our function psi that we just came up with. That's going to give us an expression for psi sub y. So when we differentiate this, this expression, our result from the previous step with respect to y, then what we get is we get x cubed plus x squared y plus g prime of y. And notice this is an expression for psi sub y, and we also have an expression for psi sub y, which is right here. So let's go ahead and set this equal to x squared plus xy. So let's go ahead and solve for g of y. We can rearrange this to g prime of y is, is equal to x squared plus xy minus x cubed minus x squared y. And this is an, a simple integration uh, to find g of y. We can integrate with respect to y. And what we get is g is equal to x squared y plus 1 half xy squared minus x cubed y and then minus 1 half x squared y squared. So now we have an expression for g of y. We also have an expression for psi. So let's go ahead and combine those two. So we have psi of x and y is equal to x cubed y plus 1 half x squared y squared plus g of y, which is uh, this expression. So plus x squared y plus 1 half x y squared minus x cubed y minus 1 half x squared y squared so let's cancel things out uh, this cancels with this um, this cancels with this and what we're left with is psi is equal to x squared y plus one half x y squared and we define this implicitly by setting this equal to a constant so our answer to this different equation will be x squared y plus 1 half x y squared is equal to c, a constant. So anyway, hopefully that was a good example for you guys to see. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop a comment or send me a message. Um, anyway, see you guys in the next video.